Hello everyone, I am Dr. Nisha Bhatnagar from Avaya Fertility and IVF Center. So today we are here to talk about a very important topic that's tubal blockage. What is tubal blockage? How do I diagnose tubal blockage? Why my tubes are blocked? And what I can do if my tubes are blocked? These are the points we are going to cover today. So what you see here is the female genital organs. This is the vagina, this is the uterus and this muscular organ which is connecting the uterus to the ovaries is the tube. Tube has three parts. This last part which is called fimbria is the one responsible for catching the egg and bringing it into the tubes. So this muscular organ serves three purposes. Number one, it brings the sperm from the vagina through the uterus to the egg. Second, it picks the two egg from the ovary when it is ruptured. It picks the egg and brings to the middle of the uh, tube. And third, it provides a very favorable environment for the embryo to grow till it reaches the uterus and implants. So these are the three basic functions of the tube. Now, why is my tube blocked? Why does tube get blocked? The most important reason for a tube to get blocked is infection. If there is a history of repeated infections, maybe a sexually transmitted disease, maybe some sort of tuberculosis, there is a history of abdominal tuberculosis, history of ruptured appendix, or there is a history of uh, repeat miscarriages, you know, which is which sometimes lead to tubal blockage. So in all these cases, the egg and sperm are not able to unite and we say that the tubes are blocked. If there is a certain medical conditions like for example endometriosis, if you have a history of endometriosis, that itself can suggest that there might be some certain kind of tubal blockage. If you have a history of ectopic pregnancy, that itself suggests that some, somewhere there might be a tubal blockage leading to ectopic uh, pregnancy. Now one another thing which I can say and people ask most of the time is my one tube is open but my other tube is blocked. So what do, do, what do I do about it? Can I be pregnant with one tube? So to answer to this question is yes, you can be pregnant with one tube. You need to understand that ovulation happens alternatively from one ovary, like one left, right, left, right, alternate month. So if the ovulation is happening on the side where the tube is open, you do have a chance of getting pregnant in that cycle. But again, as I already told, it depends upon your, well, like there are, if there are other factors for infertility, number one, number two, your age, your AMH, your AFC and other parameters. Usually the tubal blockage, if it is because of some infection like tuberculosis or endometriosis, it affects both the tubes. If there is some sort of hydrosalphinx, then the treatment option is IVF. Do I feel anything if my tubes are blocked? Most of the times, no. You don't feel anything, you don't know. The only symptom is infertility. You are not able to conceive. So I would suggest that if everything is normal, if you are having a regular cycle, if you have done a semen analysis for your husband, if the AMH count and the enteral follicle count is good, you are having ovulation, so get your tubes checked. If you are staying together for more than one year and you're still not pregnant, please get your tubes checked. How do I check the tubes, whether they are blocked or open? So the gold standard for this is laparoscopy. In laparoscopy, we put a camera inside and we see whether the tubes are open and not. Not only that, we see the peritubal adhesions, which means the adhesions outside the tube, and we see the anatomical relationship of the tube with the ovary. All these can be done with laparoscopy, but laparoscopy has its own problems. It's a um, invasive procedure. It's an expensive procedure. You have to go for a surgery. So it is not recommended all the time. I would say that you have to individualize the case. If you if you have been married for long, if you are on you know the higher age group, then you should or and the reserve is a little bit on the lower side, then you should not waste time on laparoscopy and you should proceed for the next step, which is IVF. Now before moving on to the treatment part, I would say that what else, how else can we diagnose that the tubes are blocked? The second important test is hysterosalphingography. In hysterosalphingography, we push some dye through the cervix 
from the cervix we push some dye and we check with repeated uh, x-rays whether the dye is coming out of the tubes or not if the dye is coming out of the tubes that means that the tubes are open however it is not then the tubes are blocked uh, in some cases especially where the females are young this hsg can also serve as a uh, diagnosis along with treatment why because if there are some flimsy adhesions which get broken by doing hsg so we have seen that some patients conceive naturally after hsg we can also do sonosalpingography sonosalpingography means that we are putting saline through the uh, uterus and checking for the tubes whether they are open or not on the ultrasound scans now let's talk about the point which is a very important point some people come and say that doctor my tubes are open everything else is normal but still i am not pregnant i sometimes what happens is that though they are though your tubes are open they may not be functional there is a difference between a open tube and a functional tube a open tube means that the dye is coming out at the other end but a functional tube means that it is performing its function properly when i say the tube is not functional means that the anatomical relationship of the tube with the ovary may be disturbed maybe because of adhesions it is kinked or the it is you know uh, there are some sort of uh, uh, peritubal adhesions which are making the movement of the egg and sperm difficult or the cilia inside the tube are damaged the tube is scarred from inside so it is not able to perform its functions properly what are the treatment options the treatment options as i already suggested could be laparoscopy could be cannulation or could be fimbrioplasty what do i mean by that laparoscopy as i already explained means putting a laparoscope inside and trying to see whether the tube is open or not trying to remove the peritubal adhesions trying to free the tube from other adhesions and then second is cannulation putting a small cannula inside the tube and trying to open the tube the success rate of recanalization is much less than ivf so patients who are already having a uh borderline reserve or who have tried for a very long time married for a very long time and those who are on a uh, more advanced age should not wait for uh, these uh, treatment options and should proceed for ivf so how does ivf help you in getting pregnant uh, as i already told you the tubes is the passage between the uterus and the ovary from where the egg or ovulation happens Let's take an example. Suppose I have to go to Gurgaon and the main highway is blocked. If I take a detour, what will happen is that I might take another route and I will reach Gurgaon. The same way, this passage is blocked. What I do, what we do in IVF is that we stimulate both the ovaries, we make eggs in both the ovaries, we retrieve the eggs, we take the eggs out, we put the sperm inside the egg outside the body. that means in a test tube that's why it is called a test tube baby we put it put the eggs in the uh, we put the sperm inside the egg we create the embryos and then we transfer those embryos directly into the uterus which is their natural habitat so we bypass the tube we have media which is similar to the uh, to the growth culture medium in the tube which helps in growth of the embryos outside the body in the petri dish or the test tubes with the tubes are no longer required for the fertilization process and for the growth process till day 5 and that because we bypass the main blockage the chances of success are very high if you have any other questions or you want to if you want more information on this topic please drop a comment in the comment box and we will get back to you as soon as possible thank you so much. मैं सोनिया शर्मा हस्बैंड विक्रांत शर्मा शादी को नौ साल हो चुके थे बहुत सारी जगह गए एम्स में आईवीएफ भी कराया जो कि फेल हो चुका था उसके बाद बहुत सारे डॉक्टर्स के साथ मिले आयुर्वेदिक ट्रीटमेंट भी कराए होम्योपैथिक ट्रीटमेंट के लिए भी गए लेकिन सक्सेस नहीं मिल पा रही थी डॉक्टर्स नहीं जान पा रहे थे कि किस तरह से सक्सेस दी जा सके कोई भी रीज़न नहीं सॉर्ट आउट मिल नहीं रहा था कोई भी रीज़न कि क्या रीज़न है ट्रीटमेंट के फेल होने का अभी तीन महीने पहले फेबररी में मिले अव्या के साथ जुड़े गूगल से जुड़े अव्या से और अव्या में आने के बाद एक पॉजिटिव एनर्जी आई जैसे यहाँ पे एंटर हुए डॉक्टर निशा भटनागर मैम से सबसे पहले हम मिले बहुत अच्छा लगा उनसे मिलके उन्होंने बताया 
कि हम क्या कर सकते हैं सक्सेस गेन करने के लिए रीजंस uh, बताए कि क्या क्या आप कर सकते हो क्या ट्रीटमेंट उन्होंने हमारा ट्रीटमेंट तभी स्टार्ट किया उसके बाद हमें सक्सेस मिली थैंक्स टू निशा मैम द स्टाफ थैंक्स टू गॉड थैंक्स टू गुरु जी सबके नाउ वी आर वेरी हैप्पी बिकॉज नाउ वी आर सक्सेस कई साल से हम लोग अपने लाइफ के लिए आगे बढ़ाने के लिए कोशिश कर रहे थे लास्ट में अव्या में आगे हमारी जर्नी खत्म हुई और तीन महीने पहले जो हमने यहाँ से जर्नी स्टार्ट की थी वो बहुत ही पॉजिटिव रही हमारे रिलेशन में एक दो को पता लगा है मॉरल बूस्ट करने में ना टाइम लगता है जब टाइम निकल जाता ना एक टाइम पीरियड निकल जाता लाइफ का तो मॉरल बूस्ट करने में टाइम लगता है डॉक्टर निशा भटनागर से मिलने के बाद एक एनर्जी आती है एक विश्वास आता है एक कॉन्फिडेंस आता है जो कि पॉजिटिविटी में तब्दील हो जाता है साढ़े तीन महीने से हम लोग यहाँ आ रहे हैं हमने यहाँ सबको हंसते हुए देखा है हाँ। जितने भी कपल्स आए हैं उनके चेहरे पे मुस्कुराहट देखी है निराशा नहीं देखी मेरा नाम काव्या है ये मेरे हस्बैंड है गीतम सिंह हम लोग पहलादपुर से आए और मतलब ट्रीटमेंट के लिए आए हम अव्या अब वैसे पहले हमने बहुत जगह हमने ट्रीटमेंट कराया था तो हमें कहीं से भी कोई सक्सेस नहीं मिली थी फिर हम अव्य आए तो अव्य में डॉक्टर निशा भटनागर जी ने मेरा ट्रीटमेंट करा उन्होंने बताया कि हमारी ट्यूब्स ब्लॉक हैं ट्यूब्स का उन्होंने मतलब ट्रीटमेंट करा उसके बाद उन्होंने मेरा आई करा और आई का जो हमारा साइकिल हुआ था तो उसमें भी मेरे को कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं हुई है सब कुछ बिल्कुल सही रहा इंजेक्शन का भी कोई साइड इफेक्ट नहीं हुआ और मेरे एम्ब्रियोज भी अच्छे बन गए थे और जिनमें से मतलब पहले मैंने एम्ब्रियो ट्रांसफर करवाया था तो मेरे पहले बेटी हुई उसके बाद जो एम्ब्रियस फ्रोजन थे तो उसमें से मैंने दोबारा ट्रांसफ़र कराया तो मेरे ट्विंस बेबी हुए एक बेबी बॉय और एक बेबी गर्ल हुआ दूसरे बेबी में हमें जब हमने ट्राई किया तो हमें एक्टॉपिक प्रेगनेंसी हो गई थी जिसकी वजह से हमारा एक ट्यूब हमारी रैप्चर हो गई रैप्चर हो चुकी थी और नेक्स्ट ईयर सेम डेट पर ही दूसरा एक टॉपिक हो गया था थर्टी जून को हमारा एक एक टॉपिक हुआ था नेक्स्ट ईयर थर्टी जून को फिर हमारा दूसरा एक टॉपिक हो गया था डॉक्टर निशा जो मैम हैं इन्होंने हमें हमेशा ही पॉजिटिविटीली गाइड किया है हमेशा उन्होंने हमेशा मुझे मोटिवेट किया क्योंकि मैंने कई बार कितनी बार आईवीएफ करवाया बहुत सारे सेंटर्स में बट आईवीएफ सक्सेस नहीं हुआ हमारा फर्स्ट अटेम्प्ट में ही जो है पॉजिटिव आ गया 